Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some good news and some concerning news. Uh, first up, DeFi protocol that bragged about having flash loan attack prevention hacked for six million. And I started with this story for a specific purpose also. Facebook and Google soon to enable Bitcoin buying states Jason Yanowitz. However, at first glance, this looks like a fantastic piece, but in reality, it's very dangerous. Also, the Mooch has a billion dollar mega hedge fund called Skybridge, which he started uh, and some other co-founders in 2005. And it looks like they're going to get into cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And lastly, we'll take a look at three reasons why Bitcoin just smashed to the $17,000 level. And speaking of which, let's take a look at the market. So today it is uh, Tuesday, November 17th. It's eight in the morning. I'm trying to get this out, pushed out a little bit faster. And uh, look at this, Bitcoin up 4% in 24 hours, and we're hitting 17,000. So Bitcoin is hitting on all cylinders, it's up 11% for the week. And I just want to make mention of one important thing. Today, you're going to see all the different YouTubers, everybody on Twitter, everybody on social media talk about how great Bitcoin is. And uh, it's just going to like go to the moon and it's moon time and it's fantastic. And this is the same thing that happened in 2017 when I was going through it. And I just am here to be not a wet blanket, but a wet blanket, really. And just to give a little bit of uh, hindsight and take a look back, there's going to be things that you're going to want look at that and go, man, I need to get in all in today. It is very hard to resist that FOMO. And I'm just here to tell you that uh, what goes up will inevitably come down. There is no assurance that this is going to go to the moon and hit 100,000 or 300,000 or 500,000. Um, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. And I just need you to remember that so you don't make the same mistakes that I made back in 2017. However, is Crypto Angel Assets going to do well? Well, yeah, obviously. I dedicate, uh, you know, two to three hours every day of my life to doing these videos and bringing people in and educating them as best I can. But one of those things that I think I feel that I have to do is just to have, make a cautionary tale and just talk about don't FOMO too much. Don't chase the shiny objects and be disciplined and sit back and don't bet the farm in one lump. So uh, again, I mean, I could be wrong in these whole situations tomorrow. Bitcoin could go up to a million dollars. I have no idea. But uh, statistically, that's probably not going to happen. And uh, things will do well. It's just going to take time. That's about it. All right, so Ethereum, 2.4% up, 56 for the uh, week, and that's fantastic. Look, Ethereum's up uh, 450. I'm extremely happy. That's great. Tether's looking at uh, $18 billion market cap. Looks like they printed some more. Good for them. XRP, look, watch out, 30 cents. So congratulations, XRP holders. <laughs> was not easy let me tell you uh, i think it was pegged the quarter and now it's pegged the quarter in the nickel so we're looking at 30 cents congratulations chain link 1.7 percent almost at 13 dollars it's looking pretty good uh litecoin is one of the big winners uh 23 for the week two percent uh for 24 hours and like i said yesterday i think it's because when people go to their paypal account like hmm, bitcoin bitcoin cash ethereum and litecoin well i can't afford any of those uh, but it looks like litecoin's only 70 bucks so i'll buy that and uh, hey, everybody wants to own one whole piece, even though people don't realize they can own a fraction of it. I think that's one of those things that we need to talk to people about is like, you don't need to own a whole one, just get a fraction. Bitcoin Cash is up a little bit, uh, 253. I haven't heard much about this uh, hard fork, so uh, I don't see any Bitcoin uh, Cash ABC, so maybe it didn't work out. 8% uh, for, po hey, Polkadot's almost at $5, congratulations. Someone told me yesterday that Polkadot has a uh, extremely high throughput, uh, transactions per second of like uh, over 1500 or something crazy like that. So I did not know that. That's good information to know. Cardano up 6%. Wow, look at that. Almost at 11, oh, almost at a uh, little over 11 cents. Bitcoin SV is up. Eh, great. EOS 5.8. What's up massively? I think up uh, 2.9 for Leo, 4.8, 2.8. Ave at $70 at 5.3%. That's fantastic. 20% for the week for Dash. Congratulations, Dash holders. I don't own any of that, uh, but it looks good. Uh, synthetics, very volatile, but 13% uh, for the day. Congratulations. Theta up to 64 cents. Congratulations, 3.5. That's very nice. Uh, Celsius still hasn't hit that $2 mark up here at 33 position, but uh, maybe at the end of the week. Who knows? And uh, compound up 30%. Uh, I think great. Fantastic. Let's see. Not really. 5%, 3%, 6%. Everything's up today. So remember, I mean... It's a good day. It's a great day. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm really excited about this. Everybody's in the green. This is fantastic. Well, most everybody, not everybody. But uh, just remember, 
don't chase shiny objects and uh, don't FOMO. Uh, follow your plan, whatever your plan is, and just be uh, disciplined, regimented, almost stoic as best you can. All right, let's go on today's top stories. Also, before I forget, uh, I'm going to release this today at around 10 a.m. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a live stream over on Theta Network at 10.30 a.m. I mean, depending on when you see it or when it's released, uh, different time zones, different parts of the country. But just know that roughly 30 minutes after I release this on YouTube, I'm going to do a live stream over on Theta. The link is in the description. So come join me and, and ask, ask me any questions and do a chat. All right. So... Bitcoin.com, DeFi protocol that bragged about having flash on attack prevention hack for six million. And like I talk about, I mean, there's a lot of shiny objects out there in crypto. I mean, it's like this project is awesome, this project is awesome, this project is real for use case, this project is going to go to the moon. So just be careful about what's going on. And uh, sometimes it's just better just to be a little safe. So what's going on here? Well, value DeFi, a yield aggregating protocol, boasted of having the highest security. In a November 13th tweet that now appears to have been deleted. So when you've got somebody who is very, they have a lot of pride, a lot of hubris. They they are really into their project and, and they, they really boast about it uh, incredibly. That's a, I mean, that could be a good sign, but in this situation, not so much. So just be careful because the ones that really brag so much about projects, you have to understand that um, there's a lot of different moving parts out there and you can't know everything. Me personally, like when I talk about crypto and digital assets, I'm like, well, I mean, this is what I believe to be true at this point. Um, but there's a lot of information out there that I don't know that uh, there's so much information out there that uh, really needs to be digested and understood. So when you take a look at this, just take a step back and go, is that all there is to it? And here's a prime example. So after they boast about this in a tweet, a day later, hackers plundered value DeFi's multi-stablecoin vault of a total of $8 million of the stablecoin die. The attacker returned $2 million, that's nice, to the protocol and pocketed six. And Left with one audacious message stating, do you really know Flash Loan? Man, it's a gangster. The hanker took out a loan, uh, the hanker, the hacker took out a loan of 80,000 Ether from the DeFi lending platform Aave and also borrowed, borrowed an additional 116 million in DAI from Uniswap. So they took out two different loans. According to value DeFi's post-mortem of the incident, post-mortem, that's good. The attacker swapped the ETH loan for stable coins and deposited a part of the flash loaned die into the protocol's vault. He then made a series of stablecoin swaps involving USDT, USDC, and DAI, a technique that eventually exploits value DeFi's vault withdrawal method. Ave developer Emiliano Bonassi exclaimed, This is the most complex exploit I've ever seen. It used two flash loans, which when you say it like that, it doesn't seem that complex. Like, wow, they didn't use just one. They used two. Super complex. Flash loans allow users to borrow money without collateral because the lender expects the funds to be returned within one transaction block, which is, you know, almost immediately, depending on what you're talking about. If it's Bitcoin, well, it could be half an hour to the next block or if it's Ethereum, a little bit less or different different projects, a lot less. So uh, hackers have used this loophole in DeFi to steal millions and millions of dollars. Uh, Value DeFi said it was looking at ways to compensate affected users. So again, this is just another example of another DeFi project getting hacked. And I don't like reporting on these things. I, I don't like hearing about people losing all the money. I mean, between the, the DeFi projects and, and, and the scammers and the hackers and the uh, people that just have the, have the worst intentions, I see every day people lose money like left and right. So in this space, it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. So just remember that when you're looking at the next shiny object or you're trying to get into something and make a lot, a lot of money fast. It doesn't work like that. It's just it just always is the truth. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the, in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, this sounded pretty awesome until there were some comments in the end, which I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, it talks about here, Facebook and Google uh, may soon be enabled uh, to Bitcoin buying. This is just an opinion by uh, Jason Yanowitz. And just to give you a little backstory, PayPal opened its doors, holders came in, everybody in the United States can buy uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin, which is fantastic. However, you can't hold that crypto, not your keys, not your coins. And on top of this, if PayPal starts it, then they're thinking that, well, Google and Facebook, some of the world's biggest corps, uh, are more than likely to tweak that policy and create room for cryptocurrencies uh, later on. The founder of Blackwork Group's Jason Yanowitz took Twitter 
and he states this. You think PayPal is big news? Uh, he asked, then goes on to say, just wait until Facebook and Google enable their billions of users to buy Bitcoin through their digital wallets. And I thought about this, I'm like, that's pretty cool. I mean, in all honesty, all the new people don't even know what a private key is. They don't really care. They just know that Bitcoin went up massively and they want to make some money. And that's, they're going to treat it like a stock. I've always talked about that. That's how it's going to be. But uh, there's going to be some hiccups. And when a pretty smart person says, hey, uh, it's not possible. If they open them all up, uh, if the U.S. stimulus would have been paid out in Bitcoin, for example, uh, most people wouldn't have gotten it yet because it would take three years. Increase the block size limit or die. That's debatable. But if you went from one to two percent of the population of the uh, of America, then go to roughly 90 percent plus of the U.S. population that's going to receive payments in, in Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain, um, I said yesterday I would crash. Someone correct me and said it wouldn't crash. Like, well, it wouldn't crash, but it would take a hell of a long time. So uh, three years, yeah, maybe, I don't know. It would, take, it would just take an, an exorbitant amount of time. Although, if you think about it, a lot of people had to wait a super long time anyhow for those uh, mail delivery checks. But so then again, <laughs> what's the advantage? Another comment suggested that these companies would imitate Square and PayPal. Their Bitcoin, your transactions are just records. Facebook, Amazon, I mean. And when I saw Facebook, I... I, I thought they were saying FBI because uh, I was like, well, that's true because like all the different transactions will be, you know, recorded. And of course, the IRS or the government could just look at it like who's doing this, who's doing that. And uh, that's never any good. And then lastly, in response, the users referenced the Bitcoin white paper in which Satoshi Nakamoto mentioned that the involvement or inclusion of a third party entirely cancels out the benefits of the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that is Bitcoin. And that is one of the big problems that I'm struggling with right now because I want institutions in, I want people to adopt. However, the more adoption that we get and the more people that come in, the more institutions that come in is just more of a middleman and it kind of screws up the whole system. Um, the price will go up and that's great. However, that's not the whole intention and that's not really where it should be. And that's part of the reasons why I created Dan Teaches Crypto because I don't want people just to go, oh, I have a nice stock called Bitcoin, which is not a stock. It's it's not a stock, but they're going to they're gonna treat it like a stock. And I want them to understand like this is the reason what makes it so great. It is decentralized. It is censorship resistant. It is finite and it is really government resistant. But the problem is when these institutions step in, it's not not as great of a thing. Again, it's going to be great for adoption and price action, but uh, as far as the overall feeling of Bitcoin, that uh, kind of goes away. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. All right, let's get to some good news, right? So this is a great day. Uh, I don't want to be the wet blanket, but I feel like I kind of have to be. That's just how it is. But uh, it is a great day for cryptocurrency digital assets and all the holders out there. And uh, this is just another story of another institution getting into the game because they've realized what the future holds. So uh, Scaramucci or the Mooch uh, has a billion dollar hedge fund called Sky Ridge. And they just did a filing with the SEC and said, hey, we're probably going to hold that. So what's happening? Sky Ridge Capital, uh, they have over 7.7 .7 billion asset center management, told the SEC on Friday it may invest in digital assets like Bitcoin. The SEC filing discusses the overall assessment of the firm and includes a large summary of how COVID-19 affects the economy. Buried deep in the pages of certain assets, derivatives, ETFs, ETNs, and other investment vehicles. Sky Ridge notes the G2 fund may enter the crypto economy via a myriad of angles. So again, if you're going to talk or, you know, have a, a document that is sent to the SEC, if you're going to talk about digital assets and cryptocurrencies, it's probably because you're going to get into it. You don't just put it in actually, like, eh, maybe, but you put it in there for a specific reason. So uh, of course, they're going to get into it, right? Just like all the other investment agencies that are out there. So finally, I mean, it's great news and I like to hear these things and it's good, but it's just one more example of another big uh, entity getting into crypto, just like uh, we knew they would. So just one more thing, we can a little feather in the cap. But a little side note here, Skyridge Capital was founded in 2005 by Scaramucci, Brett Messing, Nolte and Gavesky. Scaramucci recently discussed digital currencies in an interview and explained that when he returned to Skybridge in 2018, at least the company did, there was a deep dive into the digital asset space. So in 2018, after 2017, you know, huge bull run, then they they took a look and go, hmm, maybe we should take a look at this, which is like what everybody did. And of course, uh, you know, these big institutions, they don't move too fast because they have to be careful. They don't want to screw people out of their money. I mean, uh, there's a joke there. I just won't uh, say it. But uh, they're going to look at this and go, well, you know what? Maybe we should get into it now. 
And Scaramucci said, he said, hey, I'm a fan. I believe that digital assets have a future. And obviously that blockchain has a future, the partner said, or Scaramucci said. And of course, yeah, I mean, people are making money uh, hand over fist. So why wouldn't they do it, right? Especially, and I've always said this, especially for all the different people who have like uh, pensions, who have 401ks, who have different investment vehicles. Why would they not offset some risk by going, by going into the best performing asset class of all time? That makes no sense why you wouldn't do that. So of course they should talk to their partners. Of course they should talk to their people and bring it in, especially uh, people who have pensions. I think this is a win-win situation for everybody. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So last piece, three reasons Bitcoin just smashed the 17,000 level. And I didn't want to start with this because uh, I just think that everybody's gonna be talking about this today about how great everything is. And you know, just, I want people to take a step back and be like, okay, I have a plan. I know what I'm gonna do. I know exactly what's going to happen, or at least I think I know what's going to happen, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. So this is the last piece, and it's probably the best, uh, most positive that I can bring up. So there's three reasons why the 17,000 uh, was reached and is still above it as of uh, you know 8.30 a.m. So uh, Northman Traders Chief Marketing Strategist uh, Sven Henrik took to Twitter to point out that Bitcoin reached 17,000. And the reason why is because there was a bullish setup that was completed. Back in August, he spotted a bullish inverse head and shoulder setup that has now successfully played out. And I have to uh, tip my hat to this guy. I mean, back in August, we took a look at it and go like, hey, there's a there's a uh, inverse head and shoulder. And I'm sure a lot of different traders have seen this, but it is amazing that, uh, you know, kind of plays out and that's how it is. And you know, in all honesty, I really need to get the guys from Market Rebellion over to Dan Teaches Crypto website and just do some basic TA stuff so uh, people like me aren't so stupid about it. Anyhow, no coins left to dump is the second reason. Uh, with such market players as MicroStrategy and Grayscale absorbing Bitcoin supply, exchanges have seen their Bitcoin reserves drying up at a rapid pace. And this is probably one of the most bullish sentiments I can actually take a look at because when you, you have to have supply and demand. And when there's not enough supply, and there's a huge amount of demand, what happens to the price? Obviously, it goes way up. And with Grayscale, I mean, Grayscale, I think, has 3% of the entire Bitcoin supply. Uh, they have 500,000 Bitcoin. 500,000 Bitcoin, just, just them, just one company. So, uh, of course, this goes to their, their clients. They're not buying enough for themselves. But that just means that there's, there's a very uh, concentration of Bitcoin uh, through one middleman. Anyhow, Nugget News CEO Alex Saunders notes, and before I get into Nuggets News, or before this other piece, if you haven't seen Nuggets News, it's fantastic. Uh, this guy, Alex, uh, super smart guy, really goes into depth uh, about cryptocurrency. You should check out his channel. I should really add him into my uh, recommended channels. Very smart guy. The number of transfers to exchanges is actually falling this time around, not increasing, which is leading to supply side scarcity. And there's a nice little graph right here which is not very clear right here, but in the red, it's net transfer volume from or to exchanges. So usually in this case, when Bitcoin price starts to really go up, you're gonna see a lot of people take it from their wallets, transfer it over to the exchanges so they can sell out. Looks like that's not, uh, that is not the case right now. So that's looking pretty good. And the last piece here is people just don't care. And that's a good thing they state. And while Bitcoin's fervent bull run in 2017 was among the most popular topics at Thanksgiving tables this year, cryptocurrency's recent rally has mostly remained under the radar. And I guess that's kind of true. I mean, for us, it's not because we're in this every day. We check the portfolio all the time. We take a look at uh, uh, CoinGecko or Coin Paprika or whatever you're taking a look at just to see what the prices are. And we're like, well, yeah, it's going up pretty uh, uh, amazingly. So for us, it's not a big thing. What's going to happen, though, is once Bitcoin hits around, well, starting today, really, uh, it's actually started last week. Uh, once it starts to go from 16 to 17, 17 to 19, 19 to 20 and above, then you're going to start to see all the CNBCs, all the fast money, all the big uh, media outlets start to cover it again. And before you know it, then FOMO will be uh magically on because that's usually what happens and in, in that situation then it's just sit back and uh you know just go hey i i did it i invested into crypto and now all i don't have to do is i don't have to screw up by selling anything right away <laughs> that's the big thing so if, if you're a trader go ahead and trade away that's fine uh, I, don't, I, I don't recommend trading you know 100 percent 
Maybe you take 10 to 20% of your portfolio in trade, but I feel like the majority should just be buy and hold, uh, especially for solid projects. If you're in a, uh, a market cap, a low market cap gem of like uh, tomato coin, you're like, oh, it's gonna go to the moon. Uh, maybe not, but uh, like, you know, the top 50, somewhere around there, uh, you should be okay. Just don't screw up and, uh, you know, sell. So lastly, it just talks about uh, Google Trends data, which we had covered in a couple of uh, videos before. And uh, Google Trends data, it doesn't give you a percentage or actually a number of searches per day. What it just says is over a time frame, whether that be a month, uh, a year, five years, or lifetime, it'll tell you how popular a certain uh, search item is. And of course, this right here, the spike, that's in 2017 of December. That's when there was the most searches for Bitcoin, that's at 100. And right now, it's uh, around 11 or 13. So if you look at a, a scale of zero to 100, 100 is the most searches ever, zero is no searches. So we're at 13 and we're hitting 17,000. That's crazy, right? So again, just wait for uh, all the big companies to start uh, talking about it, or media. And uh, before you know it, it'll go to, who knows, 30,000. So anyhow, that's it for me. Uh, if you got any questions or something like that, come hit me up over at the uh, Theta channel and I'll be uh, talking there live. And uh, that's about it for today. So again, thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, I'm gonna put up uh, two more in case you don't wanna stop by Theta, which is fine. Uh, just go check those out. But again, the Theta link will be in the description. This will be the first time we do this, so it'll be interesting. Uh, just something new to do. All right, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. See you on the next one.